how does that look in report form? So yeah, that was a lot. Um, I'm going to hone in on a series of reports and dashboards uh, around skills, just to take an HR example and show you a little bit about what that might look like. Of course, as I mentioned, this is watershed image um, because that's what I have access to. <laughs> so let's see. Um, okay, so I've mentioned this about 500 times, but for context, these screenshots are all from a degree webinar um, that we did a couple of weeks ago. Okay, if your company is a skills-based organization, just to throw another acronym at you, an SBO, uh, L&D is a key part of that strategy. So the example here, uh, this is an example dashboard on the right, it gives a pulse on skills engagement. Um, we're looking at uh, which identified skills are being rated over time which is being rated highly, uh, which skills have been rated at all. Let's see, which have been calibrated. Oh, so like when a manager meets with an employee and together they align on um, a common understanding of where that employee is toward the skill. What is the change over time for any of these factors? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm just thinking one thing to note here is in the case of skills, um, you know, the data has to include uh, things from a skills or talent marketplace as well, or, or an HRIS or performance metrics, at least. Uh, LXPs are always helpful. Of course, the entire ecosystem um, is, is good as well. So we just want to make sure that that's all, that's all together uh, and, and that you definitely also have some performance metrics and um, ideally from a skills or talent marketplace. Okay, we can see skill gaps. So this dashboard focuses on uh, really volume and proficiency. So if an organization is focused on developing skills, it's of course critical to understand volume, which is how many of our people have the skills now in this example, and proficiency. So what's the depth of knowledge of those individuals? So if, um, for example, you have a watermark of 20 people who know uh, Python here in this example, but we only have 14, um, but we need 20. So what do we do? Do we go higher or do we go upskill? So in this case, the skills proficiency is showing that we have a lot of novices. And if these novices can be nudged into emerging um, or into a proficient average, then maybe they'll be able to do the job. Uh, maybe it won't, we won't need to go hire some new folks depending on timeline. All right, does my L&D team have what's needed to empower the skill strategy? So a simple example is what um, across my entire ecosystem are people searching for? So aggregate search, right? This exposes if there are gaps in content or in programs, but it also exposes potential emerging skills. So what might that mean in the overall market? Well, in this case, um, searches can be used as a leading indicator. So if a year ago you were suddenly seeing a ton of searches on chat GPT, for instance, <laughs> a year ago, uh, and those searches were coming from uh, whatever, LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, Cornerstone, uh, you may have done some digging. What the heck is this thing? Uh, why don't we have any content on it? How do we you know, figure this out? So that's kind of a, learning, uh, a leading indicator. Um, we've also done some webinars with some of our customers around that as well, particularly in uh, early pandemic where they were seeing a lot of searches for well-being um and working from home ergonomics things like that uh and it was actually kind of a leading indicator to see what they could do to improve their colleagues lives uh, as the pandemic rolled um right and on the flip side here if we aren't searching for things right do we need to continue our investment in content that uh we're investing in if if people aren't utilizing it or searching for it at all we can't be retired um, how do I use data to measure talent mobility? Mobility, right? So these metrics expose where skills evolve or progress. Um, how efficiently are employees moving through the organization? Uh, how well are we doing generally on upskilling? Um, essentially, talent mobility gives insights at a global level of things like new skills developed, job transitions, um, who was highly skilled but exited, where do we need to you know, go and fulfill that? Also emerging skills and just the overall pulse on competencies. Um, an example that I heard recently was if you have an open job rec uh, and you can see this kind of global distribution of skills and you notice that we have, you know, or you have people with four out of five of these skills, you, know, you could proactively reach out to them, engage interest um, for some kind of upskill opportunity. 